What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Hey, okay, y'all. What's up? This is me, Erica, and we are back. Okay. There's so many hot topics to talk about. So... First thing, oh my God, so many to talk about. Oh, did y'all hear about the veterinarian that recorded himself having sex with animals and uploaded the videos online? He's a black man, a black man, black male veterinarian. Yeah, and um, he has been sentenced to serve, and he's in Florida, sentenced to serve 22 years for sexually assaulting animals while recording the depraved acts, then uploading the videos online. Prentice Madden worked as a medical director at the Caring Hands at Animal Hospital in an Adventura section of Miami, who pleaded guilty back in July on char charges of child peno penography and um, bestiality. Before his arrest, Madden recorded himself with dogs and sharing videos on various chat rooms. Additionally, his Dropbox folder contained child pornography. Oh. According to the Miami Herald, Madden revealed during Friday's sentencing that he was abused, at, sexually abused as a child and watched his mother being physically abused by his stepfather. This is never who I plan to be or thought I would be. It doesn't represent the person. It represents who I am as a person. Then what the, What does it represent? What does it represent? Like to me, anyone who has uh, that, I mean like outside of the child pornography, um, the fact that like these are two groups of vulnerables, right? Children and animals. And you are down here and then posting it online. So you're empowered in your acts. That is the person you are, sir. That is the person that you are. And because you are that person, we are going to have to separate you from society because there will always be children and there will always be animals. And you are a threat to both. That is disgusting. And I, I hope to God that he wasn't dating anyone. I hope that he wasn't dating anyone and anyone, any adult human was engaging in intercourse with this person. Just even, I just, and then like to post it online, 22 years, you gotta go. You gotta go. You have to go. This is why people need to be on the sex, the sex offenders registry because you need to be able to see ladies when you are, I don't know if you guys do it, but you need to do like when you start dating somebody and you start getting serious, please do background checks on these people. Like treat it like a job, like literally treat it like a job. It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything to do a background check. And people are like, oh, that must, I mean, that's a mess that you do a background check on somebody that you're dating. No, no, do a background check on the person that you plan on dating because you don't know what registry they can be in. Hello, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to do a background check on you. I'm sorry. That's what y'all need to start doing. Can you imagine you're like, oh, girl, I done met me this veterinarian. He's an, And he's not a bad looking dude. He's a nice looking dude. He's a vet. Oh, my God. He cares for animals. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. And the whole time. Y'all better, I'm serious. I'm serious. Y'all think I'm playing. And if somebody doesn't want you to do a background check on them, well, you know what it is. You already know. Didn't you know the answer? You know the answer. That's disgusting. Um, Netflix employee who criticized Dave Chappelle's special allegedly gets suspended. It says, looks like, and let me tell you something about, about what's going on with Dave Chappelle. When I tell you black men, they stay on code. They stay on code. They stay on code. And it's like, and I think it was Rodney who said, it's like one, what, one of them will do something that society is like saying, boo, hiss, you know. But then it's like, they do like, um, 
like I don't know, like a bowl of dust in the sky, but something happens and they all decide to come out and support the person. They do it all the time. Damon Wayans did it. It's a lot of people doing it for Dave Chappelle. But Damon Wayans was the last the latest person to do it, to come out and say, I'm, you know, I'm sticking up for him. And it's like, and then I always think about like when I think a good question to ask yourself is like when you think of the ideas that you have about a, a group of people, when you're arguing back and forth with somebody, what is it that you're trying to preserve or conserve? What is it that you're trying to hold on to? What I, that that's my question. What is it that you're trying to hold on to when you feel like you can't make space for another group of people? You know, because if I, if I, I would ask white people the same thing or non-black people, what is it about black people that you have a problem with making space for them? What are you trying to preserve? Right? And I ask black people that. When you have an inability to make space for black LGBTQ what is it that you're trying to preserve? That's all I want to know. Get down in the comments and let me know what it is that you're trying to hold on to. Okay. Um, it says, it looks like Netflix has allegedly suspended an employee who spoke out against Dave Chappelle's special, The Closer. Um, sources say the employee lashed out on Twitter and crashed a company meeting, a, co a leadership meeting. Um, Tara Field, the senior software engineer that works for Netflix, tweeted last week that Chappelle's attacks attacks the trans community and the very validity of transness, all while trying to pit us against other marginalized groups. Field and other and two other employees were fired following the tweet and attending a business meeting review they weren't invited to. However, the CEO sent out an email to his employees to let them know he's aware of the backlash and some social media users want, to, want the special to be taken down, which the CEO has said that they are not going to do. So they're not going to take down his special. Um, I think, I, one thing I, I think that's, it is, it is, one thing that I think like we teeter on that we have to be mindful of is just because someone is saying something that you don't like, no matter, listen to what I'm saying, no matter how it affects you or how it, if, if, if what they're saying is something you don't like, you cannot shut them up just because they're not saying what you want to hear because you're turning into what you are fighting against, right? You want your voices heard, right? You want laws passed, right? You want initiatives created, right? Now, how about the people who are allowing you in those spaces say, no, you need to shut up because your opinion doesn't align with mine. So I need to silence you. So essentially, you're just becoming what you don't like. And that's what, that's what you got to be mindful. It's like, you want to silence him. Well, his opinion is out of here, right? We don't agree with his opinion. You think he, what he's trying to do, what the, I think what a better thing to do is actually take what he said, take his talking points and have discussions about them because he said something in his special that contra, he contradicted himself right when he was talking about gender he said gen he knows that gender is a construct, but his biases unconsciously then said that gender is a fact. If gender is a fact, then you immediately erase all your trans friends, Dave. So he like it's it's when a person um I don't know if it's called I don't think it's called double talking. Is it called, it's not to call double talking. Like when you are saying one thing and then like, I don't know if it was a Freudian slip. I don't know. But you know that gender is a construct. You know that it is. But then, but your biases and your need to hold on to your opinion or whatever it is that you were trying to hold on to, then you turn around and say that gender is a fact. 
and, and when you say that, I don't even think that you realize you just erased a population of people. Right? I think crashing the meeting prob is probably what did it. They got suspended after um, tweeting. So just like your the company did you, they silenced you, right? I mean, you still have your Twitter account, but you're not going to be able to run up in no meetings because you want me, you want to strangle me with your opinion about whatever it is that's going on in the world that you don't agree with Dave Chappelle and you want to silence him because he's not saying what you want to hear. Instead of actually taking what he's saying and dissecting it and showing people, hey, this is not real. What he's saying here is not true because of this. And then spotting out inconsistencies. I love doing that. I love doing that. Instead of silencing him, let's, let's dissect what the fuck he's talking about. I think that's better. Anyway. Um, um, Gabby Petito. I haven't really talked about her a lot. Um, you know, this is, and this is, I'm just saying that it says during the live stream, the coroner revealed that Gabby Petito's cause of death was strangulation and it has been ruled a homicide. Her fiance, her fiance, the man that she was getting ready to, in, to marry, that she's engaged to, is the main suspect in the case and they can't find him. The, I, I, I imagine him probably um, dying by suicide. I don't imagine that he will stand up and face what he did and face the society um <clears throat> because people are not happy with him naturally um but like i like you know i i i hear these stories all of these stories about women um being assaulted by their domestic partners or their intimate partners and it's really sad because you know uh, my my primary demographic is black women but a lot of women are being killed by their intimate partners, like all the time, like all the time, like as a just general rule, women are really not safe in society. And that's and like, I just saw something on um, one of these blogs where this man just walked up to a woman and put his hand around her, her throat. And then when somebody else walked up, he took his hand off. Like he was just a random woman. He was about to strangle on the street. Ladies, I don't know. You need to go on Instagram where you need to go. If you're not, if you don't feel safe around firearms or whatever, please arm yourselves in some type of way so that if, if you are in a space where you need to defend yourself and let me tell you something, we're not doing a horror movie where you just shoot and run. No, you send that motherfucker to his grave. If you can, like Malcolm X says, any person that put their hands on you, send them to their grave. <laughs> Send them to their grave. Okay? Self-defense. And I'm just saying because this is crazy. This girl was traveling. The cops stopped her and him. They talked to them. The cops, this is, when they say defund, they're not taking talking about removing cops. They're talking about allocating funds to other places where another person can show up and professionally assess the situation in order to tell the cops what to do next because a lot of the times some of these things are non-violent right some of it's mental illness but like somebody would be able to tell this woman and this guy they are in crisis and we should not let them go because she's crying uncontrollably. She can't get her emotions together. But there's so many cops, male and female, who have a bias against women. So when you get a domestic violence situation, I tell you, my neighbor, I don't remember, I want to say it was maybe two years ago. My neighbor was in a domestic violence situation. She was a Russian girl. You can guess her, what her boyfriend looked like, okay? We in Northern California, okay? Just guess. And um, he was terrorizing her all the time, all the time. I hear her screaming. I hear her crying. I All the time, all the time. She finally called the cops, right? The cops get there, and they are talking to her as if 
she was the one who was doing the terrorizing as if she was the one that caused this to come into her life they were talking down to her they were saying well if you just like you know like dismissing it if you were just i mean just let him leave i mean do you not want him to leave just let him leave i mean does he live here does he have keys here at one point i could not believe it but the cops were in dialogue with this man laughing <laughs> He was out there laughing with the cops. The cops allowed him back in the house. And when he went back in the house, he took all of her money and her cell phone. And he walked out with them in her pockets. And he was like, thanks, y'all. And they were like, all right, dude, and this and that. All right, now, you guys, you know, you know, maybe everything will be all right. You know, trying to, like, end it. And then... She comes and knocks on my door asking me if she can use my phone because he took my phone and my money. That's the only reason why I know that because she came and asked me if she could use my phone because he, they, the cops, she was like, they let him in the house and he took all my money. And she said he said something as he passed her in the doorway. I don't remember what she said he said, but he said something like, I don't know, like threatening, threatening to her. I don't remember exactly. But then walked out to, with the cops and started laughing. With Gabby Petito, that was like, it was almost as like this woman is hysterical. You know, she's probably overreacting and this and that. And then a few minutes later, he strangles her. And now they're looking for his ass. And this is another thing. And this is another thing. And this reminds me when I hear these divestment channels talking about divest from black men. And it's a no, 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 sweetheart. If you go over to the other side, they're no different. They all have been socialized the same. Then culture changes them a little bit. But society raises them all the same. Some reject it. Some lean into it. But they're all the same. Because they're killing their partners too. <laughs> they're killing their partners too. They are. Every day. Latin. Asian. Huh? Black. And white. And everybody else in between, Indian, everybody, Asian, everybody. The men have been socialized to relate to women in a certain way. And a lot of these men, their performance of masculinity means that they only, the only emotion that they are in touch with is anger. And so when they lose out of control, they end up, demonstrating a behavior that can potentially kill someone. So I'm sorry to break it to you. These men across the board have been socialized. They have the same programming. Some of them deprogram. Some of them lean right into that shit because it serves them and has always served them. To the point where if I'm in crisis, the cops that I need for them to be able to identify this lady is in crisis, they, they don't even see me because they got all these biases in their, in their way. Unconscious even, right? Dismissing the woman's emotions, right? She doesn't have any control over herself. She's emotional. But then they'll do this thing is plaster her face on all the newsreels to show you, ladies, Yes, this white lady is getting all the, you know, and I, you know, so many black girls are missing. And this white lady is plastered all over our screens. But to me, I feel like you should be like, this is happening here. This is happening here. This is happening all over. This is letting you know this is just not in your community. White men are killing their white partners too. Their white female partners too. Every day. Every day. And that's real. And I have a feeling his bitch ass is going to die by suicide. I really, truly believe that. All right, it says the Nets will not allow Kyrie Irving to practice or play until he's... This is the neighbor... Um, this is um, Unlock... Um, what is it called? Hollywood Unlock. The Brooklyn Nets announced Tuesday that Kyrie Irving will not play for the team until he is... Or the city's mandate is lifted. Given the involving nature of the situation and after through deliberation after a thorough de deliberation we have decided Kyrie Irving will not play or practice with the team until he is eligible to full to be a full participant 
Kyrie has made a personal choice and why we respect his individual right to choose currently, this choice restricts his ability to be a full-time member of the team. And he will not and we will not permit any member of our team to participate with a part-time availability. What do you guys think? There's a lot of companies, the private that's why that's why the um government said privately you guys can do these mandates and make your employees make your employees do something to their bodies they may not want to do and because we live in this society where people need you you need to work people need to work um a lot of <laughs> a lot of people are quitting people are getting fired from their jobs because they're not getting this this thing this remedy and um i don't i don't know it's like if you're the only one who isn't, if it's like 12 people, how many people on a team? I'll just say 20 something. It's 20 something people on your team and you're the only one. Is that a great risk or does, or, or do the vaccinate the, the number of vaccinated people kind of suppress his, him not being remedied, <laughs> remedied. I'm trying to use another word cause they get funny about the word choices. Um, because it's, if you say it, it, they think that you're talking about it and giving information on it. And so they don't want you to give out misinformation. But so what do you guys think about Kyrie Irving? They say he can't play. You know, he's a flat earther, too. You know, he's just all about just anything I'm going, to, going against everything. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Stand up. There's but but, you know, unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are in his position that do not have the capital to do what he's what he is able to do like I don't have to work I don't have to work I can make a choice to say I don't want to do what you guys are asking me to do so see y'all later oh y'all Nicki Minaj did a song with this girl from this group this UK group called Little Mix um I had never heard of them until yesterday she did this song with this girl named Jesse Nelson and Jesse Nelson um, has been accused of blackfishing by one of her um, bandmates or ex-teammates. I don't know what they are, what the, you know, little mix. And this, apparently, the woman that has a problem with it is a black, is a black girl. And, um, and um, Nicki Minaj did a song with this girl who's been accused of blackfishing. Why does Nicki Minaj always align herself with problematic people? I just, I just think at this point, we just... The, the character is questionable <laughs> but then she came out and was like y'all wearing blonde weaves y'all doing this why is it okay for the kardashians to do it i mean at the end of the day she did make some points it's like you guys have selective rage about people you just don't particularly like or you have a personal vendetta against because the girl did like another picture of, of somebody who was clearly black fishing she looked like a blow-up doll like her lips were like and it looked like she had a hole in her mouth and her hair was like parted down the middle she looked like you know that, there's so many women and it's and it's and it's wild because society has created this idea that if you can't tell what race the person is and some of their flavor looks like they could possibly be mixed with black but i'm not sure that's what these girls are doing that's what they 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 that's the look that's the look that they are going for i don't know why i don't know why i don't know why i have some ideas as to why but I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know. Uh, part of me says they want to attract black men. Um, but this Jesse Nelson, I don't know, like, her story. I've seen old pictures of her. She didn't look like that. She had on, like, this Latoya Jackson curly wig, honey. Um, and Nicki Minaj was in the... But Nicki Minaj, did she did make some points. Like, there's a lot of girls doing this. Y'all just want to focus on her. She ain't the only one. It's a lot of girls. The Kardashians are the really the blueprint of this i want to mimic the black woman prototype and i want to mimic that because i for the kardashians for me it was always a way i'm going to i'm going to morph my body um in order to attract uh, or order to be desirable to a specific group of people because 
not until like maybe the last 10 years have non-black men been really captivated by asses maybe the latin men might have but like white dudes they were really most mostly into breasts they weren't really into ass but they see that it brings attention and so and where and the where who who is giving the attention right who is paying who is paying the attention and so they have morphed their bodies and so many women are doing it and what's really crazy is that black women are doing it a lot of black girls are trying to look like the bootleg version of a black woman because they are trying to mimic kim kardashian and that group i'm just using kim kardashian as a as a set umbrella because you you could get an idea of what i'm talking about when i say her like they they're literally look at lala anthony she looked like she could be related to them she didn't look like that all the time she looked like a like go look at lala and her little sexy pictures and she looked like kim kardashian and you know that's her good 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 judy that's a good judy honey and they starting to look alike and you are you are was she afro latina Lala Rodriguez, what's Lala's last name? Gutierrez, something like that. But yeah. And so Nicki Minaj was like, okay, so y'all want to have this outrage because this girl, but then it's like Nicki Minaj. And that's what I'm saying. Like, what can you expect from Nicki Minaj? Like, I don't even want to, I'm not going to even be like, Nicki Minaj can't say that because it's like, she's already of a particular character already. So I'm like, what is the expectation? Right? Of course Nicki Minaj is going to do a song with a woman b mimicking black women or trying to look like... And then their record labels do that to them too, right? Look racially ambiguous because the men want to have to fuck you and the women want to have to be you. That's like the foundation of the music industry, really, is that the women want to have to be you and the men want to have to fuck you. And for the men, the women want to have to fuck you and the men want to have to have what you are able to have. The women, the cars, the da 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 So you have to give off that. So, I mean, she made some points. I don't know how deep this thing goes. How do you feel about Nicki Minaj doing a song with a woman who is black fishing? I'm like, I don't know what we expect. I mean, what what is... it? Would it, <laughs> You would have an opinion if you expected something out of her, something different, right? But we see... We see how she moves, how she's been moving. So, I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think about um, Onika. Um, okay, let me come right back. All right, peace. Um, take care of each other and protect your energy. Peace.